Now uh, uh, the recording is in progress. We are re resuming the meeting uh, after having adjourned for tea. And uh, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Uh, Mark uh, to uh, from UNEGA to uh, uh, you know Mark Tasek to uh, share his slide, and we can confirm that uh, his uh, slides are on day Digital Center for Excellence, and we give you uh, the floor. Uh, to, to take us through. Uh, over to you, Yuneka, United Nations Economic Commission for Africa. Uh, th thank you, Chair, and thank you for inviting ECA at this uh, important event. And uh, I would like to, how many minutes I have for this presentation? I think you can get 15 minutes, Dr. Makto, 20, it's fine. Um, and you can also show your video. Uh, that's okay, Dr. Makta. I think uh, my my video is not activated. Uh, okay, we'll ask the we'll ask the the, the, the technicians to activate your video. Uh, but okay, we can, all right. We can give you fifteen to twenty minutes. That's fine. Okay, thank you very yeah. much. Let, let 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 me start now. When 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 my video is activated, I put it on. Let me check what is happen. Yeah. Okay. ECA is working uh, on digital uh, technology since a long time, since the adoption of the African Information Society initiative uh, in 1994. And uh, we support, we have supported several countries to build this uh, information society through several initiatives. We have this uh, famous uh, uh, initiative colleague Nikki Plan, National Infra Infrastructure Communication Information Plan. And we have supported uh, 48 uh, countries to develop their, their national plan in digital uh, on ICT. Some countries are at the four level, as a one first level in Rwanda is now at the four level, Nikki four. And uh, we have some other country at Nikki three and other one Nikki two. And this support, this initiative is to support African countries develop the right policy, how they can use the opportunity of digital technology to enhance their development. And this initiative focuses mostly on the infrastructure side and the regulatory side. But in 2018, we have seen the development of digital technology around the world and African countries are facing in on several uh, challenges such as the issue of connectivity the issue of affordability issue of regu regulatory framework with the new with the new emerging technology such as fintech artificial intelligence iot blockchain technology nanotechnology and the development of the mobile and we decide the management decides uh, under the leadership of the executive secretary madam vera songe to establish a digital center of excellence on digital ID, digital trade, and digital economic. Why? These three acronym. Because on digital ID, we can't talk about information society, benefits information society, without to be inclusive. And to be inclusive, we can't leave more than 400 million, 40% of the African population without ID on this information society. We need to develop some initiative, initiative, and to support African country to develop robust system on digital ID in order to enroll all African country in the same system, and this can benefit to the all the support on administrative and social uh, issue regarding to the benefits of the digital uh, digital uh, transformation country. And we'll support why we have this digital ID. We focus more on we focus on digital ID, digital economy economy also, because uh, you know we have a young people, and we need uh, to use this one people to be ready in the four revolution and African country as an opportunity we, through development of the skill, the development of uh, the the skill of these young people on digital. Africa can benefit and can get opportunity of the new uh, job opening in the new in the future of this digital era. Secondly, firstly, it is a digital trade. Of course, is very important. We are implementing this uh, African free trade area, 
and the digital market is one of the key pillars. And for that, digital digital commerce will be play a big role. And we need to develop uh, as a technical side and the regulatory side tools to for African countries to be ready for this e-commerce. And why this uh, digital uh, center focus on these uh, three umbrella? Now I I think now my camera is on. And also the objective uh, of the digital center is uh, to support African countries to fully use the digital technology for their development, as well as to attend the Sustainable Development Goal as the AU agenda, UN Agenda 2030, as well as the aspiration of the AU Agenda 2063. I think I have, a, let me, did you have my screen? And the, the, the mandate of the Digital Center is a focus on three areas. The first one, it is a think tank, the other convener, and the, the third one is an implementation. On think tank, we, 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 we undertook several research on uh, the emerging technology regarding digital ID, digital, uh, digital threat, digital economy. Uh, and we, we developed some paper, research paper, how African uh, country can be more, can benefit more to this digital technology to enhance its development. We support also African country as we do also say specific study or research on a specific technology, how African country can take benefits on this technology like blockchain technology, artificial intelligence, nanotechnology. We do specific study on this. Also the issue of cyber security. How, we, how to tackle cybersecurity in Africa, and such as how to use the COVID to be, to, to, how to use the digital technology to recover better from COVID-19. We have several uh, research paper on this area to, 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 to advise African country or to propose new ideas to African country for the use of digital technology for their economic development, also in social promotion, as well as for the security and for sovereignty of this, uh, uh, of this African country. Also on the covenant, we, we, of course, it is very important to work on the regulatory side to promote uh, harmonization on several rules, why we played, uh, we played an important role in the development of the digital Africa digital transformation strategy. And also we just uh, finished uh, the development of if for the African Union interoperability and data governance framework. And this uh, framework will is under approbation by member states and this framework will be adopted by the next conference of the each of state in January. And we also building some environment for an inclusive digital transformation. This is a convenient. We work on to, we have too many uh, activity under policy, regulatory, as, as well as to develop uh, platform for coordination, the, the idea of the leader to, to speak on the same voice for the development of Africa in the digital era. Also, we implement also our project through several uh, initiatives. We have, uh, we provide technical advisor to the member states on digital ID, digital trade, digital technology. I'm not going uh, to highlight more this digital transformation strategy. I think everybody is aware of this Africa digital transformation strategy 2020-2030. We have a key pillar going to cyber security, innovation, entrepreneurship, digital technology, uh, digital skill, and we support member countries to implement this uh, uh, African Union interop African Union digital transformation strategy through these uh, several pillars. Some country we focus on cyber security, as a country we focus on uh, innovation and as a one digital ID or uh, research development. Also the increase, uh, we increase with help African countries to increase their investment in the infrastructure because without uh, infrastructure, it will, it will be very difficult to, to take opportunity for this digital era because as you know, African countries need, need more than hundred million dollars per year to develop their infrastructure is a lot. And some country doesn't have any, don't, don't, doesn't have a lot of infrastructure in broadband. 
and why we support now several African countries through uh, support from our partner to become to invest in the expansion of their broadband. We, we have now four countries we are helping to expand their broadband infrastructure. We bring our partner, in particular Africa 50, to work with them uh, through a partnership. Uh, they have to define the, the, what kind of partnership they want to be, win-win, and uh, they coming with the fund necessary to expand their broadband infrastructure. Capacity, capacity development and building city is very important because without that, we can't take benefits of this uh, digital era, why we support African countries, develop their skill, we support also as well as the private sector. And we have a lot of activity for youth and innovation to build their capacity on uh, the digital era. And also for the governors to make uh, this uh, digital center ve very powerful, we have a board. In the board, we have uh, is co-chaired by two presidents. The president of Kagame, we know is a role playing by this president on the digital era in Africa, and also the prime minister of uh, Ethiopia. And we have several members of, of the board. We have a private sector, we have government, eh? we have a civil society. Uh, for example, we have uh, Madame uh, Sina Lawson, it is, she's, uh, she's the minister of digital uh, tech, eco, digital economy in Togo. She is very committed in uh, ICT, and uh, she now developed a lot of uh, new initiative in in her country, Togo. We have also Mr. Eddie Jing. It is a chairman of uh, of, of uh, Alibaba fin, FinTech fi, Financial Anti Financial Group. Is a chair of the Alibaba Anti Financial Group. We have other people like uh, Amel Saidin uh, on the private sector in Tunisia. We have Rebecca also private sector in uh, in Nigeria and also as a partner from West uh, William Ford and also Nanda yeah, from Atlantic. We have several part, several members of this board and the, the board will meet every year so in March generally of the UN General Assembly. And our, what are our key achievements since the creation of the Digital Center in 2018, November 2018? We, I, I, the, the key focus area, we have policy regulatory, digital infrastructure and digital finance. On uh, policy regulatory, we, we developed together with African Union and other partners this Africa Digital Transformation Strategy. Cyber security also, we have uh, several uh, capacity building to the member state, and now we are working on a, 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 a but call it a, a data framework on cyber security for African uh, country. On the African, of course, free trade area, we work on the regulating, such as uh, e-commerce. Also, we, I talk about this Africa data governance framework, and we have uh, we support in also African country to develop their digital transformation strategy. Now we are working in your region, we are working uh, closely with Botswana. Uh, we work also with Zimbabwe and we work also on several uh, fintech in uh, South Africa. Of course, in Zambia also, we have several initiatives on digital IT. For digital infrastructure, we, okay, I talked about before, this uh, expansion of the infrastructure on broadband. We are going also to launch a big uh, project. Uh, now we already finished uh, the project. It is a, this Africa trade exchange platform, business to business for e-commerce in, uh, in, in the, within the context of the CFTA. We are going to launch this uh, platform soon. I think you already aware this uh, medical platform we launched during the COVID. And now a lot of country um, uh, order through this platform, vaccine, medical equipment, and this platform was very helpful during the COVID time and also for African countries to get the, the vaccine. And this platform also makes a promotion on African product. Yeah, because it's not it's only for African product. Yeah, in this platform, medical product. And we have seen several other countries now they came to our African platform to order product made in Africa, medical product made in Africa. I think it is the first time we as a country come to see 
what what we have in Africa. And the issue is was even the African car doesn't know the medical product in the in the continent. And with this platform, we we provide opportunity for African country to know exactly what we have in the corner. The innovation on medical in South Africa, in Zimbabwe, in Botswana, in Malawi, in Senegal, in Togo, in Morocco, and many and government can directly order with support of Afrizim Bank in this platform to get this medical this uh, medical equipment as well as the vaccine. Digital finance also we did a lot in uh, access on financial service. We work closely with uh, Alibaba on this. Uh, we have uh, a, cap a training capacity building on digital finance uh, for the private sector. We also develop several uh, platform payment platform. We develop one for the to track the COVID fund yeah, during the pandemic. We work also with uh, several other partner to develop uh, a model of financial uh, financial infrastructure uh, based on the artificial intelligence. Digital skills, uh, we, uh, I'm not going to highlight right, because we we have uh, several series of COVID coding camp uh, uh, to, to build the capacity of girls on ICT in order to empower them. It is a very important initiative we did because we started in 2020. Now we, in uh, December 2020, we we built the capacity of uh, 124 girls in Ethiopia on presencial and 3,000 on uh, online. In July, we built the 200, no, 200 in Cameroon on physic on on site and 8,500 online. And this week, uh, I'm currently in Conakry. We build uh, the capacity of 250 young girls aged between uh, 12 and 25 years. And uh, we have now 2,000, more than 2,000 following the training online. And uh, I think now we have uh, almost 15,000 uh, uh, girls and young, young women uh, building on this uh, on the technology, on this digital technology, on artificial intelligence, internet of things, on web gaming, on of an, on animation, and also on design thinking. It is a, a program very uh, interesting and very appreciated by member states. And we'll see the result at the end of each camp. We have several new initiative uh, idea developed by this young girl. At the beginning, they don't have enough skill. But during a training of two weeks, they get the skill to develop their own project on several areas, health, maternity, and on violence against a woman. We have several kind of innovative ideas developed by this young girl. I, I think we can, if you have your partner, you can visit the website and you share, and you will see the new idea developed by this young girl. This show the importance of digital and the capacity of the young people to innovate in the continent. We have also some um, in initiative we'll, uh, for, 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 for the startup, we call it uh, Innovation Investment Week. We'll organize in uh, several countries for one week uh, to bring together all startup to compete on the new idea and on innovation with new tools and new methodology also. We also have uh, in capacity building, let me, we have also this program with uh, Alibaba, we call it 10,000 plus 10 flex program. We want to build capacity of uh, 10,000 leader in the continent per year. Yeah, young leader in the in the continent per year. We already start this in, uh, we launched this program on in September uh, last year. And this, this, the, this program is going well. The digital profit, I already talked about this. Uh, uh, digital entrepreneurship also we support uh, we work closely also with the university on the research and development to see how we can use the technology adapted to the need of africa yeah because we we talk uh, we talk a lot to blockchain technology to internet of seeing to nanotechnology what we need in africa yeah did our university can find uh, some way to develop uh, some technology more adapted to the african continent and this one, we have a several intervention on several countries in 2020. 
yeah, in the we work on several Ethiopia, Nigeria, Morocco, Cote d'Ivoire, Zimbabwe. We have too many countries. I don't. We don't have all this year, but uh, we are. We work in 2020. We supported around 25 African countries uh, at the national level and uh, without the activity at the continental level. <laughs> and we have also several partners in Africa and outside Africa. I, uh, I'm going to stop there. I don't know because I think I <laughs> already finished uh, the time allocated. If you have any question, I will be happy to answer. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, many thanks. Uh... United Nations Economic Commission uh, for Africa, UNECA, uh, MACTA, SEIC for a quality uh, talk and uh, presentation that we have seen. Um, checking if uh, there are uh, specific, please add your name, uh, any questions in there? Uh, not, but just to, um, I think quickly, I think you, you have rightly uh, highlighted the aspect of digital economy, which you are driving also to make sure that that synchronizes very well with the African Free Continental Trade Area Agreement, FCTA, where several of the SADC member states are party uh, to that agreement. Uh, they have signed. You have proposed the think tank uh, that uh, could be useful for, for, for this. Uh, I'm seeing some questions are coming through. And you have highlighted uh, a governance structure. Uh, a governance structure was very interesting. I was trying to find out whether there is a representation from SADC. I want you to concretely and you know liberally, uh, you know, uh, uh, comment on that regarding the governance structure. Uh, do we have representation uh, from SADC? Uh, how did we miss out if, if if not there? And then on the policy regulation, digital infrastructure, digital finance, we see there uh, that uh, several aspects have been highlighted um, of, of of interest. Uh, particularly under digital infrastructure, that there is broadband expansion that you are supporting. We want to see uh, which countries can benefit from this from the SADC, but also the regional and intra-regional connectivity program, which can drive the FCTA. We want also to see how the SADC uh, member states can benefit uh, from this, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to support several aspects. Uh, I think let me uh, stop there. I see their hands up from Dr. Uh, Shiamo Moshegwa, I was uh, saying all this so that I can get hands up. So Dr. Shiamo Moshegwa, you will come for a question or comment. And then let me see what we have on the chat. Uh, there is, Anlein says, a uh, very good observation, Chair. <laughs> we did not see Southern Africa. Okay, thank you, Anlein uh, Secretariat is concurring with the Chair. <laughs> that the SADC appears somehow suddenly, uh, you know, uh, obscure. Uh, from the governance structure. I think, uh, uh, Moshegwa, it's your time. I'll give you the floor. <clears throat> well, thank you very much, Chair. And just to thank uh, Dr. Makta for, for that very, very good and detailed presentation. Uh, again, showing very good work that is done in the continent uh, across uh, a very critical area. Uh, if you look at digital transformation and the areas that need to be, to be addressed. Uh, I like his last slide showing the digital skills uh, the digital platform and the entrepreneurship and innovation pillars. Um, I think this is an example of a program that needs to be replicated uh, for impact. Uh, coming back to the presentation that we had earlier about the coordination at the African level through the African Open Science Platform. I'll be maybe very keen to hear from Dr. Makta, how, how do they in, intend to make this program uh, more impactful, i.e. how can countries and institutions that are not already participating be able to participate in the program going forward? Thank you very much. Uh, you want me to answer now or uh, chair? Uh, uh, later, I will ask uh, Dr. Uh, let me see. I, I saw a hand up from Anneline. Um, yes, Anneline. Yes, thank you, Chair. With the absence of uh, any other uh, member state asking, uh, thank you, Dr. Makta, once again for an excellent presentation. Apology, we could not get the entire presentation last week during the industrialization week. Uh, because of, short of uh, shortage of time, but we thought it's important that we invite you to this uh, uh, experts meeting, uh, the SADC experts meeting on cyber infrastructure, uh, 
Uh, we have this meeting every year. Uh, mm -hmm. And it happens alongside the annual high performance computing conference. Uh, you'll see the link when you register for this meeting. Uh, there's a conference also happening parallel to this meeting. Uh, so we also invite you to participate in some of the sessions of the conference if you have time. Uh, the conference goes up until tomorrow uh, for you to participate. But we are very excited about this center of excellence because we at SADC uh, are developing two strategies. One is the digital transformation strategy. We are also going to be developing the fourth industrial revolution strategy. But at the same time, we, have, we, are, we are looking at establishing centers of excellence in the region. Uh, how do we connect with the, with the center of excellence? And is it a physical center of excellence uh, uh, or is it a virtual one? Uh, 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 is there a particular country that's hosting uh, the UNECA center of excellence on, on, on digital technologies? Uh, because we are very much interested in starting to link up with the center uh, and see how we can have a partnership uh, with, you, with UNECA, but also with the, with the center to benefit from, from some of the programs uh, that are being implemented at the, at the continental level. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mokta. Uh, thank you, Anulin. I think uh, I'll now give it to you, Dr. Matt Sek, UNECA, to, uh, uh, to answer to, to those questions or so guide us. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for your question and your appreciation. I think uh, we'll be, uh, it, it will be very interesting. Uh, and your question also are very, very relevant. Uh, and I think uh, we, the digital center is for African country. Yeah, all African country can be benefits of the, of, of the service of the digital center. You highlight very important question, uh, why we don't have a members uh, country from SADC in the region. We yeah, will correct it. Yeah? If you have a representative, you can send a representative from the from the region, and we'll put it in the in the board member because we have an office also. We have a regional sub regional office in Sadek. It's based in Zambia. The office here yeah, for Southern Africa. Now we uh, and and sorry for that. And we <laughs> we welcome. Mm -hmm. The participation of one of the starting member in this uh, board meeting. I think it's very important also to have uh, all African uh, region to be part of this board. Mm -hmm. To can uh, they can orient the work of the digital center mm -hmm. uh, based on the need of their, their region or their country. Now coming to the uh, there is another an, uh, another we have several countries now benefits of this uh, the support of the digital center in your region. We have a big project in the, in Botswana now. Yeah, big project. They call Lobo Pharma, eh? digital transformation initi initiative. We have also industrialization in the agriculture sector. And also they plan to put a digital center on excellence also uh, in, in agriculture in the, in, the, in the country, in Botswana. We have also ongoing project now in Zimbabwe we are going to we are now we have as a second we are now today even today we have a meeting to discuss on the finalization of the digital transformation strategy of uh, Zimbabwe Zambia we we are in discussion on the digital ID all members country can do a request there is a two way to do the request I think we can you can send your request directly to ECA to benefits of this uh, support of uh, of the digital center, or you can uh, use your it's, uh, the SADC region to if you have a project at the regional level, it's more easy. Hmm? We can we can work directly with SADC to develop or to support them on the regional uh, on, on the regional uh, side. You told Madam told very something very important on four IR strategy. Now we work closely with Unido on this. Eh? And I think if uh, we can do something with uh, SADEC, we'll do it. We don't have any, any, any problem for that. The center now is a virtual in the, is only in ECA. You know, we, do, we do the support from ECA. We don't have a center, center in, uh, in the several region. Yeah. Uh, it's based on ECA. Yeah. I think I, I cover all the questions if I didn't forget one. Uh, you please advise, Chair, if I forget one of the questions. No, perfectly, Doc. You've uh, attended to all the uh, uh, to all the questions and uh, comments, and we appreciate your commitment to uh, to take on board. I'm sure that Annelin has uh, uh, minuted uh, that uh, uh, 
resolution that uh, at least SADI can uh, submit a, a board a member nomination or a name uh, for your consideration uh, to, to sit on the, bar, on the board. I need to take note of that, yeah. yeah. Um, I think we can conclude here and uh, invite uh, uh, the next speaker who is gonna be uh, Dr. Mary um, Jane Bopapi. After that, we'll have Prof. Martin. Thank, thank you. All but thank you. you. Thank you very much, Doc. Bye. Yeah, th thank you, Dr. Makta, through the chair. We'd like to thank you very much for, for joining us. Uh, I think it's always uh, a pleasure to work with UNECA. We've got a very strong uh, relationship with UNECA, uh, ESADEC, uh, but uh, we'll definitely be reaching out to you uh, to tap into those support uh, through this uh, uh, um, uh, committee that we have. Uh, uh, we've got this uh, meeting that we have, uh, but we'll definitely reach out to you for the support uh, and definitely send a name uh, for Southern Africa to be represented on the board. Uh, we'll discuss with member states and uh, uh, get this cleared uh, so that member states can then forward a name uh, to, to, uh, for representation on the board. Uh, because for us, it's very important that... Uh, this representation from Southern Africa on the board uh, so that we keep in touch on what's happening, uh, but also uh, create those linkages with the virtual center. But we'll definitely reach out to you on, on getting a, a working relationship as soon as possible with the virtual center. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Makta, to the chair. Thank you. Uh, 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 yeah, you can say last word, uh, Dr. Makta, just, just say, yeah, 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 yes. You are muted, you are, you are muted, you are muted. Okay, thank, thank you very much uh, for this. You are welcome to the board of the Digital Center and also we are going to provide a support request uh, to, the, to the region. And thank you very much for inviting ECA. And I think it is the first uh, relationship we are going to build between ECA and the SADC region through the Digital Center. Of course, we have a relation between ECA and SADC, but on digital, I think we can improve this relation through this committee. Thank you very much. Thank you and welcome back again, Doc. Uh, next, uh, Dr. Mary J. Uh, Bo Jane Bopapi uh, for your presentation. If um, you could share it, um, if your slides. Yes, good, good morning, colleagues. And thank you for inviting me to come and share with you an update on the project that, that we are doing. Uh, on weather and climate that is trying to assist with the implementation of the SADEC cyber infrastructure framework. So I was requested to also just give a recap of work that has been undertaken. The discussions on this project started in, in 2017. Um, so that is when we engaged with the cyber infrastructure experts on the possibility of a project um, the, on weather and climate modeling. Uh, that can be undertaken by member countries that have high performance computing systems. In 2018, we engaged with the meteorology sector of, of SADEC. So we went to the SADEC um, headquarters in Botswana with, with Edward and Annelin. With, with Annelin as well, we engaged with meteor the meteorology sector and we've also engaged together with the DSI here in South Africa with MASA, which is the Meteorological Association for Southern Africa. And we conducted a situational analysis so that we inform our project based on the situation on the ground. And from that situational analysis, we've actually published a paper in 2019 that was speaking to the findings that we got. So of, of the 16 countries, eight responded to the questionnaire that, that we were able to, to send out. So we've then tried to get some funding and we got funding. This was also actually through the through ECA. So within ECA, through the, the UN ECA, there's the African Climate Policy Center that has a program called Climate Research for, for Development. So in 2019, there were 21 postdoctoral fellowships and ours was also a, a successful one where we were given funding to run a project uh, which we titled Improving Weather and Climate Early Warning Systems Over Southern Africa. For this project, we actually considered it as a pilot because we could not include all member countries. So it was a, um, a collaboration 
uh, which included Botswana, Mozambique, Namibia, South Africa, Tanzania, as well as Zambia. And for this project, we also collaborated with NASA in the US, the UK Met Office, as well as University of Reading. With the countries we were participating with, we engaged on different research questions. Um, so this figure that you are seeing there actually speaks to the makeup of numerical um, atmospheric models. And the way we set up our questions was so that um, they speak to the makeup of the model so that at the end, uh, the people that participate in the project have a clear understanding of how models are really made up. So for South Africa and Namibia, we asked questions around what happens when you change the resolution. Uh, Mozambique and Tanzania looked into the sensitivity of heavy rainfall events to the deep convection schemes. So these are parameterization schemes uh, there are subgrid models that um, are used to represent processes that the models are not able to capture explicitly. Uh, Zambia looked at planetary bound layer schemes, while Botswana looked at sensitivity to cloud microphysics schemes. There, there is a lot of, um, I mean, if you listen to the meteorology sector, there is a lot that's being said about observations on the continent being sparse and a research conducted in all the six countries um, has indicated that we can't just say now we are going to rely on satellite products. I'm showing you an image there. It shows ground observations. And the one that shows dots there is ground observations from the Botswana Meteorological Service. Then we have a NASA pro, uh, product there that is based on satellites. So all of the, the colors that you are seeing there is rainfall. Um, the IMEG one that is B, that you see there is B, so that is a NASA rainfall product. And then we have one called ERA-5, so that, those are the reanalysis from the European Center. Then there is also a rainfall product from University of Reading, which is called TAMSAT. So what you are seeing there, that is supposed to look almost the same when you look at those different colors, because all of these, we consider them as observations. So you can see that that IMEC, that TAMSAT, that ERA-5 all look very different uh, from what we are seeing there that we call station data. And that is a challenge that we have as a continent that we need to deploy more ground observations to assist with, with model studies. Then, um, I mentioned that we also looked at subgrid models, we looked at convection schemes, we looked at cloud microphysics schemes, we looked at planetary boundary layer schemes, and uh, these are processes that are important for us to understand as we start to use high resolution that is made possible by the availability of computational resources, the availability of high performance computers. And through the project, we also managed to compare three different models that our situation analysis indicated that are being used for numerical weather prediction um, within the, the SADC region. But all in all, uh, I mean, from the study, we've really built capacity and the people that were collaborating or that are working closely on the project have a, a clear understanding of how models are supposed to be used and, and, and hopefully they will not use these models as, as black boxes. Uh, in, in his presentation, he showed that there's research output that has come out. Um, so there are a number of papers, I'm listing them there. I will make the presentation available. I'll send it to Annelien. So for those that would like to um, you know, look in detail at the findings that, that, that we got from these studies, looking at resolution, as I mentioned, as well as different subgrid models, the sensitivity studies that, that we have conducted from the, the project. Um, so, so the project itself, so the, the climate research for development ended in December of, of 2020. So in 2021, there was still funding or, or we have still, we are still working with the Department of Science and Innovation here in South Africa that have provided funding that's, that's being, um, you know, administered by the Center for High Performance Computing. So in February of this year of 2021, we ran a, a programming training and it's also one of the things that we realized was a need when we conducted our situational analysis, as well as when we were doing our, our research where we provided training on you know, basic Linux commands on the use of Git and GitHub, uh, training on Python, on Fortran, as well as on, on atmospheric modeling. So basically the basics of atmospheric modeling. 
And for in this, um, you know, training, we actually advertised the training at the end of January, and we had over 100 people um, registering to attend the training. So each of the sessions were attended by a minimum of 70 people, and we had over 100 people that registered from seven different countries within SADC. Then for, for South Africa, we've got a model development program. So when you look at climate change projections or these IPCC reports that, that have come out, the, the data that has come out or the model simulations that are used to produce that work is from models that were not developed on the continent. So in our work, we don't just want to be you know, doing sensitivity studies of models that were developed elsewhere. But as a continent, we have to start contributing towards the development of these models. So for South Africa, we've decided to work with a model called the conformal cubic atmospheric model. And we've decided to do this because we know from other continents or, or even from my experience of trying to develop a model from scratch that it's a long process. So we are using the CCAM to build capacity in South Africa to, to develop model development capacity. So it's a model that we know can work with very high resolution. It is a global model. It can also run as regional model, meaning that we can run it such that it provides higher resolution over an area you're interested in. I'm showing you an example there of providing higher resolution over the Western Cape there. Um, and we are also running workshops, um, you know, to build capacity around this model. We ran a, a workshop on 8 to 12 November. And for this particular workshop, we invited um, scientists from University of Botswana as well as from Zimbabwe. So for the country, the countries that we invited directly were these two. Um, and we also invited the AIMS scientists. So as a result, in this workshop that ran in, on 8 to 12 November, we actually also had Ghana, Rwanda, Benin, Sudan, Kenya, Senegal, um, and Tanzania also represented to learn more about this model. The model itself was developed in Australia and the developers of this model were there to give presentations on the technical details of how this model really works. So from the work that we have conducted, there are, there are some lessons learned. Um, I think first, HAPI has spoken to the, the part of additional storage. We, we have got some additional storage for the for five of the six countries. So the other countries except South Africa, we've, we've added, we've got some additional storage that has since been received in Botswana and Namibia, as well as in, in Zambia. And through our work, we've also made it possible for the med services that were not aware of HPC systems being available in their countries. So we made sure that they now know that there are some, some HPC systems that are available that they can use to do their research and uh, where possible that they can use also for their operational activities. Uh, we've also found that, you know, when working with the med service personnel, these are multi hearted people. Some are forecasters, some have to be concerned about the ground observation distribution. As a result, they've got limited time for, for research, which also links uh, on the ground to what we found when we were writing papers. And as you know, when you write a paper, you need to write an introduction that provides a background of what's happening in the country, the research conducted in the area. And when we're writing those papers for some of the countries, we actually found there were no papers whatsoever on numerical weather or climate modeling. And this is probably linked to the fact that the med service personnel are themselves very, very busy, which actually says the med services should be collaborating closely with universities in, in their countries. And with the space observations, um, I've, I've already indicated this, that we, we can't just rely on satellite products. So there are space observations and there are limiting research um, as well as uh, model improvements. If you don't know what the observation is like, you don't know what the model should be, should be targeting. Then following our research, um, so some of the, the scientists that we're collaborating with have shown um, interest in, in further studies, you know, masters as well as, um, you know, PhD studies. Um, so when these inquiries came up, we didn't really have funding to assist them, but this is just something uh, that I'm putting out there that there are scientists that are interested in further studies um, that, that we need to find ways of, of, um, of supporting. Uh, so going forward, we were going to continue to seek more funding. Um, uh, I, I think it's, um, you know, finding, you know, big funding that can assist many countries is, is not as easy 
So, so I propose that we also take advantage of some bilaterals. Um, so there are some engagements between different countries. So we can also collaborate in, in that way to make sure that, you know, in the event that there's no funding that supports many countries at a time, that we make sure that there is progress that, that continues. And for the different countries, I think it is important that the, the research that we conduct is driven locally so that it speaks to the national strategies. Each of the countries need to say something about you know, the climate change projections, you know, how they are impacting them, what are they doing to adapt to climate change. And now with COVID, we've we've learned, I mean, um, <laughs> we would have met in person now, but 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 you know, we are here meeting online. Uh, so I think going forward, we are going to to continue to take advantage of you know the virtual platform to be able to provide training to a number of countries all at a time um, at, at lower cost. Then with, with our modeling, so for South Africa, we are committed to the model development. And as we, we've said, we are, our focus is on CCAM and, and we are happy for other countries that are interested in joining us in the development of this model to, to assist with it. And with sensitivity studies, we are going to continue to use the weather research and forecasting model, which is a model that has been implemented in all HPC systems that were participating in, in, in our project. We've also been invited to join a project uh, on Codex East Africa. It focuses on rainfall, but for this project, the models are not going to be running. We will just be downloading the Codex data and a number of countries will be analyzing this data and there've also been some, some training. And going forward, I think um, you know, there was a discussion, discussion around you know, more HPC resources. So for the countries to be able to extend the time skills, the work that I've just spoken to is what we call numerical weather predictions. So it's the shorter time scale. Uh, but for different countries to expand their work so that they do, you know, they produce something on seasonal forecasting. Uh, they produce climate change projections, having run the numerical models themselves will require more HPC resources. So, so as the users uh, or as beneficiaries of HPC systems, we will appreciate you know, more resources as they become available. We will be able to, to expand on the work that we are doing and be able to expand also on, on the, the time scales. That, that concludes my talk. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mary Jane uh, Bopapi, concluding on a, a great note, uh, which we see there. Um, your work has mostly been on meteorological services, but also space observations. You have, uh, 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 can you also give an English? Okay, so there are some questions coming through, we'll capture that. You have uh, discussed some traditional or conventional methods uh, for modeling like w uh, WRF, UM, but also COSMO for cosmology and all that. You have critically analyzed the three key aspects which the high performance computing must deal with, uh, parameterization, optimization, and resolutions. You have proposed a conformal cubic atmospheric model, and you are almost inviting everyone in the region uh, to, uh, to benefit to use uh, the conformal cubic atmospheric model, which is based on the cubic based uh, uh, system. And you are saying that most of the member states in SADIC, uh, their main departments uh, do not know of the uh, existence of HPC, if it exists. Uh, and also even exploiting it appropriately. And you have lamented that there is a need for uh, computing power within HPCs, which can handle issues of med services and also space observation. And I wanted you to be able to come to specifics. What are you proposing either in terms of meta, uh, petaflops or related uh, computational uh, capacity uh, for that? I'm sure that uh, uh, happy Dr. Happy Sitole will come to that because I've seen him asking a pertinent questions. Number one is what are the forecasted timelines for, uh, for customizing uh, CCM for use in regional model of SADIC? So that's number one from Dr. Harpe Sitole, just uh, draw that one. And then he, he says further, can you also give an indication on the amount of resources required. In fact, this is the same question that I was asking you in terms of the cluster uh, uh, resource uh, uh, requirements at a minimum, but also the actual capacity, uh, storage, 
uh, but also computational uh, power, uh, considering the computational load of the processes that you are learning in terms of parameterization, optimization, resolutions, and the meshing in terms of cubes. Uh, I see Anlin also has a question here uh, where she says, thanks, Mary Jane. Uh, no, uh, Anlin, thank you, Dr. Mary Jane, for the informative and great presentation. Please share the presentation and the paper. So please do that to Anlin, uh, the contact was given. I see from Brian uh, Johnston, thanks, Mary Jane. I am interested in your virtual training plans and experiences. So I'll touch base after the conference as an aside, uh, it seems appropriate to conduct all meteorological HPC training on a cloud. So this is a proposition uh, from John. Uh, can you take up this um, round of comments, but also questions from Dr. Happy Sitole, uh, so that at least we, we can see, uh, at least put something down in terms of specifics, uh, especially uh, as laid by Dr. Happy Sitole. Over to you, Mary. Hey, thank you, Chair, and, and thanks, colleagues, for all those comments and, and, and questions. Um, I'm not going to be specific on, on what extra resources are there that, that we need, um, but I'll just indicate to you what is happening in Europe uh, versus what we are not doing. The, the UK Met Office is, for example, investing 1.2 billion in their HPC, 1.2 billion pounds. Um, on their HPC system. So this is investments going from this year for the next 10 years. The ECMWF, which, which is the European Center, they are investing 800 million euros on their HPC system. So these are not HPC systems that are meant to service different sectors. It's just for meteorology alone. And in terms of where they are with the work they are conducting, they are far ahead uh, compared to us. On the continent, with the numerical modeling that I have just described, it's just the regional modeling we are talking about. So it is running with high resolution only over Africa or, or only over you know, a country that one is interested in. So with the resources that are available in the member countries, we could not do, we can't make any global simulations. Even with the one that we have at the South African Weather Service, we can't make any um, you know, global simulations. So in terms of what we need as, as, as med services, the weather changes a lot. So you need to have resources that can assist you across a range of time scales. There are countries now that are updating their forecast every one hour. Every one hour, you need to produce a forecast maybe for six hours. So that because thunderstorms change very quickly and you need to be able to update that information. Uh, and the type of grid length that is used for that type of work is sub kilometer. So you have to be less using less than one kilometer of, of grid length to be able to achieve that. And the bigger the domain, um, the better. So the South African Weather Service, we make those updates four times in a day. As I mentioned, others are updating um, every hour <laughs> that, that have the, the resources. And this is not even something that we can talk about with the HPC resources that are available in some of the, the, the SADC countries. So, so I, I think, like I said, I cannot give you an actual number, but, but from what I've indicated, you can say that there is a lot of investment um, that is needed if we were to say we are catching up with the likes of, of, of the UK Met Office or, or the, the ECMWF. Then the, uh, with Annelin, yes, I, I, will, I will send you the, the presentation. Then um, with the online training, um, yes, we will get in touch, um, Brian, on these ones. And uh, with the training, um, the med training having to be on cloud, I think that is a good idea. So if you can assist us, um, you know, where possible for us to get access to such resources, it's something that we, we can appreciate. So far with the training that we have provided, we have used, for example, I think it's called Calc, where, you know, people would just use, you know, people would just have access to be able to run some basic Linux commands when it came to running the models themselves, we didn't really provide any platform. We just showed people how, how it is done. So the use of cloud will, will assist us a lot. Um, I, I believe I've answered all the questions, Chair. Oh, yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mary Jane Bopape. I'll ask uh, Happy Sitole because if I was in South Africa, I would have visited your place and uh, went onto the console, run some commands and see the uh, or what is required and, and see the project in terms of resource requirements. And I think that this Happy Sitole can do, and I would like him to comment because we need to at least draw at least certain concrete 
uh, baseline performance that we need to be talking about. And linked to this also, uh, Lesego from Botswana has asked the question uh, regarding um, uh, uh, for those countries uh, where the, the, the HPC is being used for maid services, how is the data security uh, uh, you know, uh, taken care of? Um, uh, yeah, HPC is to handle the data security aspects. And as we know that this data is very critical and well in all member states by rule and uh, of uh, international standards, uh, uh, climate or weather information uh, is, is top level, uh, you know, um, uh, secure information like is any other. And uh, uh, yeah, so how is the uh, security aspect handled uh, on, on this that is not tapped? It is linked to issues of aviation and all other military and, and the list. Uh, Happy Sitole, can you just intercept uh, this uh, doc and then I think we can uh, have her respond to issues of cyber security, uh, security aspects in terms of handling uh, major data. Yeah. Okay. Now, thank you very much. Uh, and, uh, and, and thanks to Dr. Abu Pape for this comprehensive uh, talk. Um, I think uh, the main thing that I wanted to jump in um, there is to try and link uh, the question that I raised now with the question that you raised earlier about what does the region need? And I think what Dr. Bopape has demonstrated is that for us to really be able to adequately compute and be comfortable as the region, we need much more resources. And, and what she just indicated, and I know she's just tried to tell us that we need much more than what we have. Uh, because at the moment, if you look at uh, the organizations that uh, she is telling us about, say the UK Met Office, uh, the standard of the meteorological services is to run two systems in parallel, one which is a uh, failover to another. And at the moment, even the largest system that we have in Southern Africa, we can't even be able to provide that failover we provide it in an innovative way, in a sense that the South African Weather Services does a fail over to the CHPC. But uh, what she's indicated is for us to have this long-term forecasting, we need much more resources to be able to run these big ensembles. So it's one big challenge that we still have. And um, I think even the projections of the 10 petaflop flop are way still uh, behind of what is required. So we really need much. So I think it is that uh, um, the meteorological services, uh, the astronomy projects, bioinformatics, which are really areas which are critical to the overall SADC that needs to be well resourced. And so I thought I should just make that comment. The only question that you did not uh, uh, attend to uh, Dr. Bopape is uh, the question about why you are saying the meteorological services, people are juggling many heads there. So I'm sort of thinking, how can we bring in universities and this HPC centers that we said, that we are setting in SADC to support this meteorological services? Is there a way that we can sort of beef up this center so that they help uh, the colleagues so that they don't have many heads to juggle. And maybe then they can give us better weather prediction. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Doc. And uh, please, uh, Dr. Popape, uh, uh, attend to this one, plus the uh, question from Botswana Resego on uh, handling security. And then that will conclude your session and we'll be inviting um, uh, Prof. Martin uh, to, to conclude uh, this session for lunch. Yeah, I think there was a question, uh, Chair, from myself, and then I see there's also a hand from Dr. Tiamo. Uh, if you may allow us before my okay. goes. Okay, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, okay, so let me uh, allow you to uh, come in, and then uh, the two of you, and then uh, she will attend to that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, okay, I'll ask Dr. Tiamo to go first. I'll go after him. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Annalyn. Thank you very much uh, for, for allowing the, the, the few questions that are left. I also enjoyed the, the, the presentation and concur with uh, Dr. Sitwale. But I think the bigger picture is also to have an ecosystems view around this project. You'll see from uh, Dr. Bupape's presentation that she was talking about the modeling side of things. But down the pipeline, there are other things. 
Uh, now that we can do modeling, what about disseminating information about these models to stakeholders? What about the products uh, to different sectors, whether it's agriculture and other things? What about innovations around all these things? So I think just to concur with uh, Dr. Sitole, we need to think bigger. Uh, we need to resource more. Uh, we need to build around some of this fundamental research that has been done. We need to make sure that there are also products and services that come out of this. And this can only happen if you got obviously a common uh, research and innovation agenda, but also the investment that go in. I see the potential for this weather and climate modeling insofar as also other application areas related to the consumption of this model outputs. Thank, thank you, Chair. Just a comment. Comment, comment noted. So uh, this one is uh, for uh, to, to, to note. Uh, uh, and then I, I'll ask Anneline. Anneline, you are recognized to, to uh, intervene. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. And thank you again to Dr. Bukhapi for a great presentation. Uh, I know we've tried uh, to bring, uh, to have a partnership with the Southern Climate Services Center of Excellence, uh, but I think we need to now uh, take up the conversation uh, to bring the Southern Climate Services uh, Center of Excellence on board uh, so that we, we have the training in a coordinated uh, manner as a, as a result of this project to see that, you know, what is being identified. I like, I like specifically the observation that um, uh, the way that the med services are not doing research. Uh, so how we can then bridge that gap between uh, the med services and the, 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 the higher education, but also the, the research and innovation sector. Uh, so I think we need to have a conversation with the, the Sari Climate Services Center of Excellence, bring them aboard and have a coordinated program with them uh, to support the med services. That's, that, that's the, uh, the, the, the input I wanted to make, Chair. Thank you. Thank you uh, very much, uh, uh, Anne Lee. Over to you now, uh, Dr. Bukhabi. Hey, um, thank you, Chair. So I'm, I'm gonna start with Lesoho's question on, on security, but I'll answer it from the point of view of um, the, the South African Weather Service. And then regarding the security on HPC systems, I think either Hepi or Tiamo are more um, suited to answer that question on how you know, they deal with security on the HPC systems themselves. But from the South African Weather Service, our data is, is not available outside. So if I need to work on an HPC system here, yeah, I either need to use VPN to connect um, to the systems within, within source, or, or I need to be, you know, physically present in, in the office. So our data is not really available out there. Then on the question of, of universities, how do we bring them on board? So this is actually a conversation that the World Meteorological Organization is having, and they are um, encouraging the med services to collaborate with the universities. And this is because the med services are actually the ones that have been collecting this you know, weather data over years. So they've got data that is just sitting there that's not being used, that can assist a lot with you know, model development, understanding atmospheric processes. So I think it's just a question of are the med services available themselves? Because you know when it comes to the collaboration, it's also a question of are the med services also willing to share their data? So the conversation is not just about saying we want to increase research. It's also a question about data availability to say are they willing to share it out there if they still want to be able to sell it to make money out, out, out of that same data. So I think it's, it's a slightly more, more complicated discussion, but, but we definitely need the universities to be working with the med services to, to increase um, the research output. And with Annelin, I agree with you that we need to work closely with the SADEX ESC. While we are running our programs or the, the training on numerical weather prediction, they've also been running a project uh, funded by the African Development Bank where they've provided training on numerical weather prediction to the med services. So it will be important that we work with them so that we, we join forces for, for, for bigger impact. Then on the comment on the ecosystems approach by Dr. Motewa, I, I agree. So through the project, we did try to not mention anything about the development of products, but we did actually have people that are working in applications research that develop products for agriculture, water, um, as well as health sectors. Um, and then in terms of dissemination, it's something that I think the med services also 
need to work hard on. We need to have, you know, weather apps. We need to have our websites that are that are updated, that are able to that we can use to issue our forecasts. Um, you know, effectively, we need to be working with community radio stations for those people that do not have, uh, you know, mobile phones that that can install weather apps on them. Thank you, um, uh, Bopope, uh, Doc. Uh, this is uh, awesome, and uh, yeah. we appreciate that. Most of the member states have visited in, in Southern Africa. Some have data as far as 1950, 1930, but is sitting idle and sometimes not even digitalized. And it's a huge resource which would help us to uh, to do uh, modeling, but also uh, not only modeling, but also even artificial intelligence, machine learning to train uh, uh, certain, you know, uh, of, of that data uh, to, to, to precision. We end the uh, uh, session. Sorry, Chair, I just wanted to make a comment uh, before uh, uh, Professor Martin comes in. I, I just want to make a comment to say I think the presentation by Professor Martin is timely. Uh, because Professor Martin is the is the CEO of the Southern African Research um, Universities Association. So it's an association of uh, a, a number of universities in the SADC region. So I think the conversation that just happened now about bringing the universities on board, I think Sarua is a strategic partner. And as SADC, we are already having a partnership with Sarua, uh, especially in the education sector, but also in the climate sector, where they are working with the climate and environment colleagues. Uh, but Professor Martin will elaborate more uh, in his presentation. I, I just want to highlight that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very delighted that uh, Professor Martin is coming in after this conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Th th thank you, Anne Lynn, uh, SADC Secretariat. Uh, Professor Martin, you are now being elevated to the podium. Uh, you can take the floor. Uh, we look forward to your presentation. Over to you, Prof. Martin. Uh, <clears throat> good morning. <clears throat> thank you. Um, thank you very much, Chair, for the uh, the introduction, I just see that um, I cannot start my video. So if it's possible to just attend to that, please. Um, so I can just switch on my my, my video. Um, but um, um, colleagues, um, good morning to, um, to you. And um, thank you for this um, opportunity to, um, to meet with you and to um, share with you um, some of the um, or, or, or the work that um, Saroa is doing around the um, digital transformation of um, higher education. So um, I just hope that I can um, share my screen with you. Um, yeah, I yeah, think I can. Ask, yeah, I think you can see my questions. screen there. Yes, we, yes, can, we can confirm uh, your yeah. screen is uh, visible and your voice too. Yeah, we'll, okay, we'll just ask okay. The Thank you. Also, to activate your video. Technicians, please activate uh, uh, Professor Martin's video, please. Thank you. If it's possible. Thank you. Yes, please. Um, okay. So, um, so, so I, um, I, I was asked by Annalene to um, speak this morning about. Um, uh, open and distance learning and the impact of COVID and um, um, then also implications for digitization or digitalization of higher education. Um, I chose to, to make my topic slightly different than the one that I was requested to speak on um, and to speak rather about um, um, uh, scoping the space of higher education digital transformation. So rather to make it a a, um, a, a, a broader um, theme um, than, than just looking at the um, at, 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 um, at, at, at open and, um, and, and distance learning. Um, the reason for that is that I think the, um, the, the um, impact of digital um, developments and digital technology is now much wider. Um, than open and distance learning. In fact, I would like to uh, comment that a cyber infrastructure approach to support high education must actually support or define the problem uh, much more broadly. And this was how do we um, support the comprehensive digital transformation of high education? Um, there's a quite recent report by EDUCORS looking at top trends in technology for 2022. Um, and um, basically making the point that um, that 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 um, the high education we deserve cannot be created without technology. 
Um, so this is not just about the del delivery models for teaching and learning, such as um, open and distance learning. This is about um, about um, a broader project um, to to transform higher education. And um, over the past um, two years, with the impact of the pandemic, yes, the 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 the, the focus has been really on um, what has been referred to as emergency remote teaching and learning. Um, and universities across SADC have um, really um, been put under extreme pressure to um, adopt um, uh, online or hybrid or blended learning um, in order to uh, make teaching and learning possibilities um, available to their students. And of course, this has been the most important priority this has been essential until now. But um, the point is that digital transformation is a comprehensive opportunity and challenge for higher education. It's a unique opportunity, I believe, to transform higher education by reshaping institutional business models and culture to anticipate and to serve the current and emerging needs of our learners, our researchers, communities and employers. Um, I think that higher education has been quite slow on the uptake of digital transformation um, and that what we mean by digital transformation is rather unclear and ill-defined um, and it needs to be um, clarified um, better. Um, and also that I think there's a tendency amongst higher education institutions to approach digital transformation in an unsystematic manner um, and that the digital transformation of teaching and learning must be embedded within a much broader institutional digital transformation process. So digital transformation is really not about what the IT section of a university can provide. Um, it's about a, a higher education institutional strategy um, to engage with the opportunities provided by digital transformation. Um, it, involves a much broader base of actors within the university and the days are gone when the IT division can you know sort of do really interesting um, experimental work with all kinds of um, uh, digital technology solutions and then try to sell them to the university or sort of say these are um, possibilities that you could consider using. Um, the point is that um, institutions as a whole must embrace a digital transformation strategy. And that's why at Surua, one of our four strategic focus areas is the digital transformation of higher education. Um, and um, in our recent engagement with our members, this actually has been identified as the most important priority for SADC higher institutions. But they need a huge amount of help in actually engaging with what digital transformation of higher education means. And it's self-explanatory that digital transformation of higher education in the SADC region is critically important. Um, we have around a 9% gross participation rate in higher education in SADC, um, way, way, way below the kind of participation rate that we need to become um, economically competitive um, and to be able um, to, um, to take part in the knowledge um, society and, and economy. Um, and the traditional brick and mortar um, approach isn't going to cut it. Um, so unless we um, enable our high education leaders to um, develop and to implement um, creative um, strategies for digital transformation, which includes the digital transformation of teaching and learning and research and innovation, our higher education institutions are not going to be able to contribute to regional integration in the way that they should. Um, many universities still think about a kind of supply mode approach to digital transformation. We'll experiment with interesting solutions. Um, and what they need to do is to shift much more to a demand perspective. In other words, who are the, the customers? Who are the clients of our universities? Um, our students are not customers, they are participants. But how do, we, how do we optimize the educational journey of our students? Um, 
what does it mean for them to um, to be meaningful partners um, in the teaching and learning experience? And what do we do to provide them with an optimal um, teaching and learning experience? We should focus very much on people and organizational matters and not just on technology, but to develop the cultures, to develop the people-oriented skills that will um, enable digital transformation uh, and to develop a value proposition that actually indicates the importance of digital transformation in our higher education institutions. Um, we need to understand and appreciate that leadership in our universities um, is a distributed shared model of leadership and we need to um, help our universities in SODEC to develop this kind of model of distributed shared leadership that realizes that leadership responsibility um, is shared across the university. Um, we need to help our universities and we are committed to doing that at Sarua to engage in a process of sense making around digital transformation. What does it mean? How do we engage with this? And how does each university develop and implement its own digital transformation strategy? Um, so um, one can talk about various concepts. Um, one can talk about a process of digitization, which is perhaps about digitizing information and organizing information in a digital kind of way. Digitalization, which may be automating processes, uh, streamlining them, but leading up to a higher level of what could be called digital transformation. So um, what we want to engage with with universities in SADC is what is this pathway? What is this journey that, that leads through these various phases to um, a more comprehensive um, digital transformation approach, which enables the reimagination and sometimes the rebuilding of processes and applications. Um, so, um, the recent um, EDUCORS um, study published just a few weeks ago um, identifies a number of trends. Um, cyber everywhere are we prepared? Developing the processes, the controls, institutional infrastructure, institutional workforce skills um, for, um, for, um, for um, um, being really prepared for um, um, cyber innovation data protection, secure data, um, and so on. Um, the fact that Evolve will become extinct. Um, universities must accelerate digital transformation to improve their operational efficiency, agility, their institutional workforce, um, digital faculty members, digital staff members, they need to be empowered to be able to be digitally fluent. Learning from COVID-19 to build a better future, um, and creating a blended campus which provides digital and physical work and, and, and learning spaces. Um, moving from digital scarcity to digital abundance um, and um, also um, what, how will higher education expand in a digital world? Um, what, what, what will the new models of higher education be? Um, there's a tremendous opportunity for higher education, and we've been hearing that this morning, to engage in reskilling and upskilling. But that means that the traditional cohort of higher education needs to be redefined. Um, 18 to 24 year olds will just be one cohort that's participating in higher education, but there'll be people engaged in lifelong learning, in reskilling, in upskilling, in career changes. Um, and, and, and these are expanded opportunities for, for higher education institutions to engage with a much broader range of, 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 of learners. Um, within the shift to the cloud and, and you really being radically um, um, creative in, 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 in our approach to digital transformation. So the EDUCORS 2032 report says we need to develop a shared vision and a shared strategy around digital transformation um, and then um, student success as institutional success. So the digital faculty for a digital future, um, learning from COVID-19, um, creating a, an environment of digital abundance and radical creativity. Um, 
And of course, Sarua cannot do this alone. Um, we cannot, um, it's not our role, our mandate, um, to engage with the critical issues around the availability of data platforms, um, data networks, um, Wi-Fi um, ability. Many of the, we, we had a colloquium series in June with our universities and the common theme to all the presentations was we have unreliable bandwidth, we have unreliable Wi-Fi, the severely limits our ability to provide our students and our staff with a high quality digitally, digitally enabled teaching and learning experience. So Sarua has a critical need to engage with the SADC cyber infrastructure policy to be able to say, how are we going to, to, to engage with our universities and our university leadership so that we can assist them to be able to procure and to, and, 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 and to have access to the kind of um, cyber infrastructure that they need um, to provide um, their students with optimal learning environments. And of course, their scientists and their researchers with the kind of environments in which they can cooperate optimally with their research colleagues all over the world. Um, but the sustainable business model for, for universities as well, um, we need to also really empower our universities to create um, uh, uh, optimal business processes um, so that they can provide their students and their staff, um, their other clients with an optimal working and learning environment. Smart campuses, um, the um, ability to be smart about the way that we um, develop our student records, that we um, provide um, support services to our students and our staff. All of these things depend on um, sustainable um, business models. Um, we need to create the kind of environment in which our universities can work together um, around shared academic programs and shared courses, um, uh, especially at the postgraduate level so that, um, um, and of course, you know, um, in which researchers and um, colleagues involved in innovation can, can work together um, optimally. So we need a shared vision and a strategy of the contribution that digital can make. Um, an understanding of what digital can bring to university activities that opens the space for imagination and innovation and creative and meaningful positioning. What is the scope of digital transformation for teaching and learning and research and innovation? We've heard this morning a lot about open science, open educational resources should be very high on the agenda of SADC um, to allow our universities to um, use open education resources to um, uh, uh, develop high quality curricula and to collaborate around curriculum development. Adaptive learning environments, learning environments, digitally enabled learning environments that adapt to the profiles of our students that are intelligently designed using artificial intelligence to um, support our learners and to um, you know, sort of understand their learning needs, virtual learning environments, virtual laboratories. Um, I don't know, and, and I speak under correction here, but but how, to what extent is is the ability of our universities to provide high quality training or um, uh, learning and teaching in our laboratory based subjects constrained by financial resources around laboratories. To what extent can virtual laboratories, and I'm not saying that virtual laboratories are a panacea and can and can just replace physical laboratories, but simulations and the ability of students to be able to engage in simulated environments and virtually enabled learning environments, would that not play a huge role in, in, in expanding the horizons of what can be achieved in our laboratory-based disciplines. Data intensive research, very important. Digital tracking systems for our students um, so that we can follow our students along their learning pathway by means of um, digital tracking systems. So um, I would say that, that from Sarua's perspective, we're at the very beginning of a journey of really trying to understand um, how our universities can develop um, appropriate and sensible um, digital transformation pathways. Um, 
and 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 we we sense the importance of this, um, but we 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 also um, are looking for partnerships to be able to 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 take this work forward. Um, I've mentioned earlier that 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 we need to think about a a um, an appropriate definition of digital transformation that encapsulates the logic or encapsulate encapsulates the logic of, of of digital transformation and how it relates to to, to strategy. I'm reminded of um, uh, experiences that we had in South African higher education about 20 years ago when some universities eagerly jumped, jumped onto the bandwagon of what was then so-called distance learning. Um, but they did it in a disjointed and opportunistic kind of way. And in many cases, distance learning was never integrated into university strategy. That's why for me, um, let me put it this way, we need to have a program to train and capacitate our higher education leadership around what digital transformation is. If we don't really sell the vision to our higher education vice chancellors and our higher education leaders, then we, then, then, then we miss a really important opportunity for um, capacitating the leadership of our universities who need to lead this, this process of, 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 of digital transformation. That's why the shared vision and, and the strategy around what digital transformation can achieve, I think is so important. So possibly for universities, digital transformation is a process of deep and coordinated shifts, mindset, culture, work, workforce technology, in accordance with strategic directions identified and shaped by and led strategically by a broad and distributed base of university leadership, enabling the university and its various constituting entities to achieve their objectives in relation to a continuously changing environment through the increased innovative and meaningful use of digital technologies and applications. So I think what we're really concerned about at Sarua is to say the digital technologies and applications are not ends in themselves. They are important, but um, engaging with them must be linked to strategy. Um, it must be linked to a coordinated process um, and, and it must be a shared responsibility through the university, enabling new education, operational and, 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 and business models. So we're keen to, to, to explore with our universities um, what needs to happen in terms of mindsets, culture, workforce, and technology. Um, what kind of strategic directions can universities develop around digital transformation, realizing that universities have different visions and different um, contextual locations? Um, and um, how do... How can, you know, how can digital technology and solutions allow universities to achieve their objectives in relation to a continuously changing environment and then using um, um, digital technologies and applications in a process to develop appropriate value propositions and new educational and operational and, 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 and business models. So in a sense, you know, asking our universities, where do we come from? Um, where are we now in terms of digital transformation? What are we currently using the digital possibilities? Where, can, where do we want to go with digital transformation? Um, what, what could we achieve um, working together and in partnership with each other? And how do we get there? How do we move from where we are now to where we really want to go in terms of, of digital transformation? And I think that um, that um, I'm, I'm glad that Anulin mentioned the fact that um, that that Sarua is is partnering with Sodec. Um, I think that that um, my personal opinion is that um, currently the Sodec higher education um, sector is not contributing optimally to the um, to the Sodec um, regional development and integration agenda, and perhaps some aspects of digital transformation can, can optimize this process whereby um, 
the, the, the wonderful resources that we have in our higher education institutions can can really work hand in hand with with SODEC to 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 address the 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 the, the challenges of our um, uh, of our regional integration agenda. So um, we need a framework for digital transformation that's appropriate um, for our for our SODEC universities. Um, and this is perhaps one way of looking at this framework. I'm just about finished now, but I think that that what I really just wanted to say this morning was that um, I think this is really about much more than than open and distance learning. I think this is about a total revolution in teaching and learning, whether it's open and distance learning, whether it's campus-based learning, whether it's students who come to campuses and engage with with hybrid learning. This is this is a revolution in the way that teaching and learning takes place. This is a revolution in the way that academics define themselves. They are no longer the sage on the stage. They are not the complete repository of information. They are facilitators, skilled expert facilitators of a learning journey. Um, and, and, and we need to empower them um, to take part in that journey. But this is about mindset, it's about institutional culture, um, a range of ethical uh, questions come into play about um, the way that we use artificial intelligence and, and, and data science, um, appropriate technology solutions and so on, and um, empowering our, our learners um, then to be, to be um, effective um, participants in in an educational journey, um, but also our workforce, um, our um, academic colleagues, um, and also our colleagues, not just academic colleagues, our support staff um, to, 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 to engage in the opportunities provided by, by, by um, digital transformation. So um, I want to, um, in a sense, just say that, that, that um, that, 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 that I think we, if we can think about a, sort of this type of comprehensive model for digital transformation, um, and then um, think about how we can empower and enable our higher education leaders to, um, to engage in this process um, of digital transformation, um, so that our universities can really make an optimal contribution to our, to our regional integration agenda. So um, I'm going to, um, 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 conclude there, um, and and um, thank you, you know, um, Anderlin, for the opportunity. I sort of um, realized listening this morning to many of the presentations that I'm here in the company of um, very learned experts, and um, you know I don't have your kind of technical knowledge and understanding of cyber infrastructure and 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 highly refined you know, sort of um, um, concepts around digital technology. But from my side, I am concerned that um, that we should empower our higher education institutions to contribute, um, you know, optimally towards um, um, regional integration through their processes of digital transformation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Prof. Uh, Martin of uh, Salua, uh, Southern African Regional University Association. You have lamented that uh, participation from the SADC in Salua and uh, uh, regional initiatives has not been as you had uh, anticipated. I'm glad also to note that um, you have um, uh, brought in a very innovative technique of sense, make, sense making, which UNDP Accelerator Laboratory and several others are using. You bring all those ideas, map and highlight which one is uh, the issue. Uh, so sense making is a very good strategy uh, to do that and uh, shared readership distributed aspects. You brought in a slide where you said cyber everywhere, are we ready? You know, uh, which actually was talking about cyber presence and physical presence that each one of us would be defined as being physically present, also being virtually present. So if we're only physically present, we might almost be out of uh, context, uh, I think, this argument. 
Lastly, I saw that within your presentations, you've been using the acronym DX for transformation, uh, digital transformation. And admittedly, so you discussed the scope of that, uh, which looked at uh, issues of um, uh, data intensive research, virtual apps, OERs, open science. I'm sure that at that time, Dr. Shiam was very, very happy when you mentioned of open science. He was excited. Uh, and then digital uh, tracking systems for students and all that. But lastly, you have brought in something which might be confusing or something which might be exciting if we jump on it, the digital transformation for higher education framework, which I think no one else can claim uh, authority or intellectual property except for yourself and your colleagues. And I think uh, I wanted to invite uh, participants and experts to, um, uh, to ventilate, but also to, uh, you know, to intervene. I see Dr. Siamu here said the issue of digital skills assessment is critical. Let me not read it for him. He has uh, the floor and he can come in. Uh, over to you, uh, uh, Dr. Moshe Gua. No, no you. thank you very much, Chair. I think you are doing an excellent job. I'm just sitting here marveling at all the summaries you're making because I think this captures very well the pertinent points that will need to be captured coming out of this discussion. And also to infuse about the presentation that Professor Oyster has just made. Um, coming from a university, uh, these are issues that we know of. He mentioned particularly the issue of engaging management and university leadership. Um, the issue of digital transformation across the university is very important. Um, it's as if he was uh, uh, engaging with us in UB University of Botswana last year. We spent about five months trying to develop a four IR strategy for the university. Um, hopefully one day it will come to see the light of day. But I think your presentation summarizes really what needs to be, to, to be, to be done uh, at the university level. Uh, and my question is very simple. Uh, I was going to ask um, regarding the issue of digital skills assessment, because I think in tandem with digital transformation, it's a very key issue. I'm aware that there are some instruments developed by ITU and others uh, to help uh, obviously uh, do these assessments at national level and institutional level. I wonder whether maybe this is something that you've thought about in terms of assessing where we are regarding digital skills, thank you. Um, yes, I can yes. take one, let me see if I can take one or two more so that uh, Prof. Martin can handle uh, both. Uh, let me see if there are hands up, no one else. Are we hungry for lunch already and we want to lose out the big opportunity as uh, Sadek? <laughs> uh, just one, let me take one, one more uh, interview. Dr. Stolle, this Dr. Stolle Yes, Andre. Yes, Dr. yes. Dr. Tolle has this end up. Oh, Dr. Sitole, happy Sitole. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Yeah, please, please. Uh, yeah, no, th thank you very much. Uh, and um, uh, thanks, for Professor Westeisen, for a very um, uh, thought-provoking uh, talk. I think uh, it uh, puts um, us here to think about, if we are talking about the infrastructure, how do we really support the foundation? and which is uh, the education. And, and this is uh, very important that as much as uh, we're looking at uh, the cyber infrastructure as uh, something to propel our R&D uh, I, we still have got the foundation that uh, needs uh, to be solid. And um, I think the points that we have raised are very important that uh, we have to look at how do we provide these platforms, uh, especially uh, during the, uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, we started seeing the two worlds that we live in because uh, the large percentage of our schools could not have any form of education and uh, because of the digital divide. And, and this is something that uh, we have to wake up and look at and um, I can send you just um, a sort of a, a map that we have done, but this was just based on connectivity. To say for um, a very good um, online education, we need decent connectivity, not uh, mobile data connectivity, because with mobile data connectivity, it's going to be very expensive for the kids to study because you really need to be online for the whole day. And how much mobile data are you going to be able to pay? 
So some of the things that came, like for an example, say we're doing the zero rating of some of the sites. If you look at those sites, where does the education take place? It's not only taking on some specific sites. Kids have to find information from all over. So I think uh, it is very important to look at this and to say, how do we move? Uh, and there was a, um, a good presentation yesterday on the TV white spaces and looking at how can we be able to move data on the local storage systems and if, uh, students can be able to have access to it uh, without any cost. So these are some of the things that we really have to think of to make sure that we can be able to have access to education materials um, uh, easily and at a very low cost. So I think this community sitting here, um, if uh, the education departments come and we look at the solutions which are here, we need to be able to find uh, something that can be able to work. And especially from uh, getting the contents and also some of the things, there is a lot of uh, expertise in uh, the community modeling for being able to make simulations where we can be able to look at how do we do simulation of some of the complex concepts uh, in terms of teaching that could be shared with education. But I think opportunities are endless and we would really like to get uh, your advice in this community where we can so that uh, we can be able to use this infrastructure effectively. Thank you very much for that presentation, Bob. Thank you, uh, Dr. Happy Sitoli, and for that also. Uh, over to you, uh, Prof. Maji. Oh, oh, well, um, I, I just want to, um, to, to say thank you very much for, for those comments. Um, I, um, I, I agree with, with, with um, the, the um, uh, statement made by, by Prof. Machehwa uh, that we um, need to do um, an assessment of digital skills um, amongst our universities um, in, in, in SADC. I think that would be very important. And I think there are various existing types of um, examples of that. For instance, the one used by or developed by JISC in, in the UK, which we could sort of um, use as as an example, it would need to be contextualized in the SADC, but I think we should do a digital skills assessment. And I think we should also, um, you know, try to get to a clearer, more, uh, a clearer evidence base for what type of um, capacity do our um, institutions have um, in SADC around the cyber infrastructure that they need um, to be able to um, support digital transformation. And I think this links up to, to what Dr. Sitole is saying is that, um, uh, and, and I have to admit that we have not done this yet at Surua and we want to do this, I think as a priority, um, is to do this kind of, um, of needs assessment um, within the um, um, SADC uh, region around um, what are the cyber infrastructure needs of our universities. Um, so, so I think that, you know, we would, we, we would like to do that, and um, my preference would be that we do that together with um, with colleagues from this group, so that we can also feed it back into um, possibilities for for making cyber um, infrastructure resources available, which is not Sarua's mandate, but I think it does fall within the the the, the mandates of of various colleagues in this group. So we would really want to reach out to you and and take hands with you and and do this together um and um so so i i i, I um if i heard correctly um i think one of the the things that would really help and, and possibly it's already happening already so excuse my ignorance but i think that um dr Sitole may have been making a reference to the possibility of making sort of um centers available um, within SADC um, where students can come to be able to take part in digitally enabled teaching and learning, which I think is the way to go. Um, I think we need to do this so that, uh, because many students, you know, are quite far removed from physical campuses. So if we can create 
and you know look at existing places where we can really um, establish and set up this cyber infrastructure to support our learners to be able to 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 engage in digitally enabled teaching and learning i think that would be a wonderful thing that we that 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 we need to do so it seems if i i see your thumb is up so that that looks like it's it's on the right and 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 for me you know i i i remember many years ago in south africa there was a kind of um sort of um, re recommendation by the Council on Higher Education about creating teaching and learning centers for open and distance learning. And, you know, to an extent, that's the UNISA model. But we need this kind of model to be to be developed within SODEC, you know, so that our students really have have access to these to these centers to support them. Yeah. So I think that would be a wonderful initiative to to undertake. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Prof. Uh, Martin. Uh, and I see another hand from, uh, I would like to recognize um, Dr. Michael Zimba, uh, Malawi. Dr. Zimba, you are recognized. Thank you, Chair. And uh, uh, thanks, Professor Martin, uh, for that important uh, presentation. Um, on I, I I just wanted to to brought uh, the attention of the participants uh, the pyramid nature of uh, the educational system uh, in most member states in Africa. Uh, by the time you reach the university, I think it is very uh, relatively small fraction of our people that go that far. And yeah. when it comes to measuring the uh, digital skills. I, I I know there was a mention of uh, how do we assess these digital skills and and all that. Uh, it's important that we link that into uh, the qualification frameworks of um, our nations, such that um, those digital skills, some of the basic digital skills, should come earlier on, uh, maybe uh, in primary school or secondary school, so that when we reach at the university. Uh, we are intimating with the uh, substantial digital skills. And now, now that comes in to say that um, the university, uh, the member states, I think should uh, speak the same language uh, when they are framing um, uh, the regional cooperation and regional frameworks for uh, different uh, uh, qualification frameworks so that uh, we have to uh, release a good uh, um, a set of these basic skills earlier enough to the lower levels of the qualification framework, because that way we will be able to reach out to a good percentage of our people who have no chance to go to secondary school or limited chance even to go to the university. I just wanted to mention that. Thank you. Uh, thank you. You can comment on that, uh, Prof. Martin uh, uh, Sarua, Southern Africa Region Investor. Yes, no, 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 no. I uh, just to say, I agree completely with that. I think that we, 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 we need to, um, to, um, to really um, develop digital literary schools from a very early stage um, in our um, school systems. In our, you know, sort of, um, and 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 that it should not be something that, that you know, sort of, um, only starts. Um, at a high education level, we we actually need to start much earlier. I, I agree completely with that with that statement. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Prof. Martin. I wanted to uh, mention as I'm concluding now for this session for lunch, and I'll be inviting Anlin just to, to do one or two housekeeping matter. I wanted to say that I think what uh, uh, Dr. Zimba has highlighted is uh, a call to align the national qualifications framework to the SADIC. Uh, qualifications framework, which is already in force and operational, uh, and in there to articulate issues which we're talking about in terms of emerging uh, technologies. But also, uh, Anlin shared this morning about the intent uh, of SADIC to develop the uh, fourth industrial revolution or revolution 4.0 uh, strategy uh, for the region. Uh, and in that in that regard, it should be easy uh, in that strategy uh, paper, uh, what whatever it will be, uh, to highlight uh, what other countries like Zimbabwe have already done in their curriculum. I know uh, even in primary school, artificial intelligence has been integrated uh, in there. And um, these are the kind of aspects, uh, either as modules 
or in whatsoever form uh, at an early grade to, 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 bring, to begin to, to, to do. So to bring some intimate interactions uh, going forward uh, to capture or to leapfrog what we want to do. So I think these are the two instruments I wanted to uh, refer to uh, qualifications from it uh, by SADIC, but also the SADIC for, for IR uh, transformation agenda or uh, strategy, just like Botswana has done. Uh, we heard from uh, Siamo, Dr. Siamo, the same. Uh, Annelin, uh, let me invite you to dismiss us for, for lunch and invite us to maybe at some time. I'm sure that at that time you should be the one to, uh, to make a presentation, Annelin. Yeah. Thank you. No, thank you, Chair. I'm just looking at the program. Uh, I think after lunch, we'll get the uh, presentation from uh, just an update on the establishment of the National Research and Education Networks, NRENS. And I, I, uh, I hope uh, Professor Martin will be able to join us for the session uh, because it's quite critical for what he mentioned in the area of higher education in terms of uh, infrastructure, connectivity. And I think this is a very useful conversation that will uh, uh, be important to, 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 to Sarua, uh, but definitely uh, just to thank again Professor Martin for his presentation and then after this we will have a follow-up meeting uh, with Sarua uh, together with the team uh, leading this committee uh, through you Chepperson, uh, led by you Chepperson, we'll have a meeting with Sarua uh, just to see how we can bring them on board and, and they can benefit from some of the initiatives that are already been rolled out uh, as part of the static cyber infrastructure framework. So definitely we'll be in touch with Sarua. We already have a working relationship with Sarua, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll have that follow up with, uh, with Professor Martin. Uh, so after lunch, we'll have the presentation on the end rents. Uh, so it's now 12.38 according to my time. Uh, let's say 12, uh, 12.40. So maybe Chair, we can uh, reconvene at uh, quarter past one, if that's fine, just to give, uh, maybe there are some people uh, we need to collect kids from school or something. Uh, we, um, so maybe quarter past one, if that, if that is fine. Yes, I think let's let's do a quarter past one uh, and then immediately there and then we'll have a great van near Cake. Am I correct uh, for the South, Southern African NREN? Uh, is, is that so? The, yes, you don't uh, have, have an update on the entrance, yeah. Uh, who, who, who is reading on that? Because uh, is it Dr. Joan uh, Kurtz? Uh, the, the program that I'm looking at uh, is a bit tricky. It looks like there are certain parallel sessions ongoing. So I wanted to know, uh, is it Dr. Joan or is it uh, uh, Breit, the one who is presenting uh, on NRAIN's update? Okay, we'll get guidance. I've just communicated with my colleague, uh, Edward. Uh, we'll get guidance because we've asked for also maybe some uh, um, uh, representation from Nikis, uh, which is okay. about, uh, Dr. Stolle's institution. Uh, so we'll see if uh, somebody could come there, but we'd also ask uh, uh, Mr. Stain, who is part of the Ubuntu Net Alliance from Zambia, uh, okay. from Zamren, uh, just to also assist uh, in giving some up update. Uh, thank you, Chair. So we'll sort that out during the lunch break. Uh, yeah. But I, I ask that member states get ready to do their presentations, uh, 10, 10, 10 minute presentations. We've already received uh, some of the presentations by email, uh, but uh, get ready so that we, we take immediately after that, we take the presentations from the member states. Thank you, Chair. Okay, perfect. We are dismissed for, for lunch. Uh, we bon appetit to everyone and see you again at quarter after one. We have uh, 35 minutes, uh, all the best. Bon appetit. Yeah, or maybe we'll say, we'll say, I think 35 minutes will be too short. <laughs> maybe uh, we, we stretch it to, 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 to 20 past or half past, Chair? Let, 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 let's, let's take it at half past one to give uh, yeah. a full reflection and then we can, yeah. I think, up to uh, half one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, half one, I think that will be realistic because it might be a rush for the, for the yeah. colleagues because yeah. they've been uh, connected for a long time. So half yeah. one, we meet at half one. Yeah, okay. so we'll try and fast track the rest of the day. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Okay, we can log out or, or yeah, something like that, yeah? No, but I can stay logged on. I think it's better to stay uh, logged on. Yeah, it's, it's uh, better to we'll stay logged yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> thank you, we thank you. We meet at half one. Yeah, thank, thank you. Bye. Thank you.